Evans with the football and a big first down at their own 31 yard line as we begin play here in quarter number two. And this will be Corey Watkins pushing ahead for six yards before he's pushed back hard by the Warrior defense. Game night live presented each week by McDonald's. Don't miss out on McDonald's new buttermilk crispy tenders. We had them last week and oh my gosh, mm-hmm. they're good. Juicy cuts of chicken season just right. Use every last morsel of our tenders to get every last drop of our delicious sauces like the new signature sauce, the Sriracha Mac sauce. Prices and participation may vary. McDonald's, I'm loving it. They gave him eight on the carry, so it is second and two. And again, they'll give to, nope, going to be a keeper. And Taylor is dropped for a loss by the aforementioned Greg Rogers. Actually, I think 49 got it. Did he get it? Uh, yeah, first person I saw was Rogers. That's Hogan again. We've called his name a couple of times. Yeah, I believe it was. Oh, yeah. Yep, Hogan. it was. Yeah. I looked up and saw Rogers standing over him. Well, we're so used to Rogers making <laughs> the tackle. But Hogan made a nice play there. And so far, again, this Grovetown defense has been ready. Evans, let's see if they can answer here. Third and about six. Loss of four on the play. They need seven on third down. They will throw for it. It is complete. Into the arms of that's Holmes. Diedrich Holmes once again down inside the 25-yard line before he's finally dragged down. And that is going to be a 37, 47-yard pickup for the Knights. Yeah, Holmes, that was just a well-designed play, and Holmes just beat the cornerback, and the safety wasn't quick enough coming over. So it'll be first and 10 from the 26. This time they'll go back to the ground and squirting through the middle for making something out of nothing is Watkins. Man, he's just a ball of muscle. I love watching this kid run. And he's being so patient tonight because it's got to be frustrating as they're now in the Augusta Technical College red zone. It's got to be frustrating when you know you're going to get three or four yards a clip and you just got to wait on that one you can break. And he's done it so far tonight. And the quarterback, of course, Taylor, has had the big plays. He picked up four on the play. It'll bring up second and six from the 19-yard line. Again, it'll be Watkins on the carry. Has room, left side, Watkins. And for the first time tonight, we have a flag down, and that one's coming back. Man, he, he bounced it to the outside. A little quick step to get to the outside here, if you watch on the replay. Right there <laughs> he's just he's holding he goes but you see he's holding it might have been right there down. Too. well we mentioned during the break i'm going to blame this one on nathan for saying circling on our stat sheet no penalties in that first quarter and That's what do we have on the second play of the second uh flag <laughs> well yeah here are the first quarter stats evans led in rushing 56 to 34 yards over grovetown 44 of that came on the one run by taylor Passing yards, Grovetown had the big play, so they had an edge, 72 yards to 30. Total yards, 106 to 86, Grovetown. No penalties, and, of course, the one big turnover by Evans on that touch on the interception on the uh, first possession. So, essentially, back to the original line of scrimmage here. It'll be second and 10. It is Watkins, same play, and this time he cuts it inside and driven into the ground, but not before a gain of about five yards. Yeah, that was Miles Jackson Again. coming up and cleaning things up at the end of the play. And he made the first guy miss and was able to pick up some yardage. Rodgers, he was able to get through Rodgers' hands as well, but that slowed him down enough for Jackson to come over and make the tackle. There's Miles Jackson, who has four picks this year. Back the area leaders. Back inside the Augusta Technical College red zone, out of gun. They need five on a big third down. Throwing for it, completing. First down and out of bounds, Phoenix Jenkins. Yeah, they took what the defense gave them there, not necessarily going for the end zone, just making sure they got that first down. And Jenkins ran a good route. Taylor put the ball right where it needed to be, even though he was on the run. He did a better job that time. Remember on the run earlier, he threw a ball and was really low. Mm-hmm. That time he did a good job putting a lot of zip on that one to get it out there. Demikas Taylor, 23 touchdowns accounted for, 17 on the ground, 6 through the air coming into tonight. So they'll have a first down just outside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal from the 10. And they'll go... With a keeper here up the middle, made one man miss and into the end zone. Touchdown to Mika's Taylor. 
Well, I said 23, make it 24 touchdowns. <laughs> 18th rushing touchdown, and Evans has tied it up as we await the extra point. A great fake. The defense, it froze him just long enough for him to get out there, and he made a good fake to make Shamar Cofield miss. And we thought we'd have a shootout tonight, and that's what we're having so far. Back and forth we go as we are tied now at 13 apiece and to attempt the point after and try to give Evans the lead once again is Max Tyler. Well, Evans is used to these shootouts. Grovetown had, a, had one last week, 42-39. Evans had a 49-48 uh, double overtime loss to Washington County earlier this year. The kick is up and good. The GMC kicks for college. Extra point is good. Gives Evans a 14-13 lead with 8.41 left in the half. So Evans now with the 14-13 lead and back deep to receive for Grovetown. Doesn't matter because that is through the end zone. Wow. Uh. There, yeah, I tell you, Tyler can boom. Like I said, he made a 49-yard field goal earlier this year against North Augusta. Evans opened the season with a loss to the Yellow Jackets, who are ranked number four in the state in South Carolina and unbeaten on the season. Nine play, 80-yard drive for Evans to give them the lead back. 14, 13, 841 to play in the half. And Grovetown will begin from its own 20. Well, big possession here. Grovetown has had control, but now Evans with a touchdown. They took the momentum a little bit. Let's see if Grovetown can answer. Ball oh. on the ground and falling on it is Miles Jackson. That was Woo. almost a big disaster for Grovetown as Jackson lost the ball but fell right on top of it. And yeah. instead, it's going to end up being a six-yard gain. It was Davis Watson that stripped it loose for Evans. Yeah, junior linebacker Davis Watson got a hand in there, but luckily for Grovetown, the ball bounced right in front of Jackson, who was in there spelling D'Angelo Durham at running back. And as such, it is second and a short two, and straight up the middle they'll go again with Jackson. He'll be close to it, maybe a yard shy. Now that time we get to mention D.J. Lewis because he is – you know, Evans' version of Greg Rogers, the tackle machine. He's got almost 50 this year. Had a big game earlier this year where he had 14 in the game against Washington County. There you see him, number 30, right in the center of your screen. Talented young linebacker. And going to be short by, by a, a a less football. than a year. Yeah, yeah, about the length of a football. So pretty big third down coming up here. For the Warriors. Well, Grovetown's front line on both sides of the ball has won the battle tonight. Let's see if they can do it here. Third and the length of a football. They'll try to run it, and they won't get it. Well, here's Jackson trying to keep his foot, but he's going to be stopped short. I don't think he got maybe half, an inch. If you're he Jackson, needed about six inches. He fell to the side. If you're Jackson, you've got to know where you are and fall forward. Right here, you see he almost got away. He's got to just fall forward mm, there. Yep. I mean, you, you're so close. You know you need a yard. And no gain, and that's going to bring up fourth down as this Evans defense holds. Well, that's got to be so tempting <laughs> to a coach. <laughs> you know you only need a half yard. Second half, maybe, but in the first this, half. This part of the field also. Yeah. yeah. So Youngblood comes on as the punter, and Evans should get decent field position here as their return men are back at around the 40. And this time a good kick by Youngblood. Fair catch called for at the 45, and that is where the Knights will set up. Well, fair catch by Watkins. There you see Corey Watkins, who, again, a number of scholarship offers. Furman seems to be the leader right now, but that could certainly change between now and February. We also get a chance each week to highlight some of the performers not only on the field but in the classroom. And our scholar of the game from Grovetown High School is their tight end. And it's number 11. His name is Hayden McPeak. Hayden is not only a, a starter on the offense, but also an excellent student with a 3.86 GPA. Congratulations to Hayden McPeak, our scholar of the game for Grovetown. The give is two Watkins around the left side. Now he's got a head of steam. First down and then some across midfield into the 44-yard line into uh, Grovetown territory to uh, Evans territory. Well, Grovetown territory. Well, we hadn't got a chance to see what is his specialty, and that's his speed. He runs a 4 4 40. Uh, and there we get to see a really little bit of speed. Really turned it on speed. there. Yeah. That's what has the colleges attracted. Everywhere he went this summer, he ran a 4 4 3, a 4 4 5. 
He's just got that really good speed. You can't teach that. Pickup of 11 on the play. Watkins has run for more than 100 yards in each of his four of the last six games, but that's going to be a huge loss as there's trouble on the snap. And Taylor had to go back and get it and fall on it on his own 45-yard line. WJBF Scott Scadden has watched the game on his iPad <laughs> and said he calls Tyler because Scott is actually the PA announcer for the Evans games. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they play at home, and he said he calls him touchback Tyler because it's, you know, basically almost a touchback every time. And we were talking about the kicker, Max Tyler, earlier. Mm. Big loss, 11-yard loss, so it's second and 21, and that's not going to get a whole lot better as that blue wall collapses on Watkins. Well, I tell you, this Grovetown defense, when they've had to answer, when they, the, you know, the, the shank on the punt earlier where it gave Evans the ball, the Grovetown 43, they got a three and out. And then, you know, Grovetown stumbles a little bit on offense and gives the ball back to Evans in pretty good field position, but the defense steps up again. Jeremiah Williams, the first man in there for Grovetown. He's another one of their college prospects. Just a junior, but already getting some looks. Uh, last year they had a number of kids, seven in all, sign scholarships, something that Coach Postel is very proud of. There's a timeout on the field. Napleton Infinity timeout. Augusta timeout. Evans. There's Evans on top 14-13 here midway through the second quarter. Some scores from around the area. North Augusta continues to lead their matchup with South Aiken 7-0. Also in South Carolina, Silver Bluff over Calhoun County, 14 zip. Lincoln County leads Warren County, 21 to 8. Aquinas over Green County, it's 19 nothing there. Uh, also Jefferson County leads Butler, 14 to 6. Burke County leading Richmond, but that game closer than most would think. 21-13, Richmond Academy hanging in there with Burke County and Dodge County hammering Washington County. 21-0, that one is in the second quarter as well. Just some of the scores from around the area tonight. It's like we have a dinosaur in the student section tonight. <laughs> yep, there he is. Right. Uh-huh. There we go. They are not extinct. It's weird that you can hear Matt's mic so good through that costume. <laughs> that is very impressive stuff. <laughs> so third and I-20 for Evans. Third 24. They need to get to the Grovetown 34-yard line. And obviously they will try to throw for it. Taylor heaving it long. He had a man down there, but... Overthrew him down the left side. They'll bring him a kicking situation for the Knights. They were trying to go to. Yeah, Matt is saying he had another receiver. Jason Deli, who's another speed burner, had him open. Good coverage that time by Lamar Price, the rover for Grovetown. He had to cover the speedy running back, Watkins, and stayed with him. So good job by the rover, Lamar Price. And another good job by this Grovetown defense. This drive started with such great field position for Evans, but ends up going backwards. And now the Knights will be forced to kick. Well, I tell you, Taylor, though, showed a little bit of an arm there. You know, he's known more as a runner, but when he needs to air it out, he can. And here's Tyler. Who Tyler really gets his foot into this one. Wow. Bounces inside the five. And what a kick by Max Tyler down wow. inside the one-yard line. Who ended up downing it back there for Evans? Looks like it was... Derek Canteen. Canteen. Yeah, they're really high on this kid, Derek Canteen, one of the young players who stepped into a starting role this year on their defense and uh, did a good job there, down there and downing it inside the inside the one, it looks like. Well, Tyler, that time, you know, his last punt, he boomed it too, but it bounced in the end zone. This time, he had a little backspin, a little, little sand wedge in there. And we will hear from Max Tyler at, at the half as we honor, as always, our Greater Augusta Sports Council Ray Guy Award punters of the game for both Grovetown about, and Evans. How about 57 yards on that punt? <laughs> and as such, Grovetown, in the shadow of its own goal post here, uh, this is a big possession for Crowtown's offense. You don't want to do anything crazy here. And keeping it safe and playing conservative is Durham up the middle, trying to just create a little room here. Yeah, and he'll brought it out to about the three-yard line. Germany was got hands on him, and then he got some help from Davis Watson and a few others. Yeah, big, big possession here. And he gave him one on it, so call it second and nine from the Grovetown two. Well, if you're Evans... You would love to stuff the stuff them here and make them punt from deep in that own end zone. And Grovetown's just wanting to get some room for their punter, and if they get a first down, great. B-E-A-T-B tonight. Uh, 
again, it's Durham. Need to get out of there. Durham in trouble. Durham still on his feet and gets out of the end zone, barely avoiding a safety. Wow. Woo. Great second effort, and I mean, he barely, we were talking about fall forward earlier. He fell forward just to get the football out of the end zone. A great second effort because it looked like they had him, and boy, just poor job of wrapping up there, or Evans has a safety. And that saved Grovetown not only two points, but Evans getting the ball right back uh, by Durham not going down it because a, a host of Knights were there. Number 21, Canteen, you got to wrap up. Canteen had the best angle on him there as Germany and Phoenix uh, J- Jenkins were in there as well. Third down, and you would imagine the Knight defense will pin its ears back here, and that's going to make things even worse for the Warriors. We have another whistle. Timeout. Grove Town. They, they call oh, time out. So Stand time corrected. Out. Time out Grove Town. And so we will take one with them. A Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout with Evans leading Grove Town 14-13 late in the half. Grove Town is deep in its own territory. Trailing 14-13 and facing third and 10 from its own inside, its own one-yard line. And trying to get rid of it, needing to get rid of it is Bangham. Going to heave it downfield. That is dangerous, but he is wide open and dropped at the 22-yard line. That was Emmanuel Bryson. Oh, oh man, Bryson, you got to hold on to that. That would have been a, That would have been a really demoralizing play for Evans. Bingham, I, good job stringing it out and just getting rid of the ball. I thought he was just trying to throw it away. I did, I did too. I was even worried about, you know, he's outside the tackle box. I was even worried about is there a receiver nearby, but uh, he actually almost completed it. So now, be careful here if you are Grove Town. Taylor Youngblood standing in the back of his end zone. Wow. And this is a scary proposition. Either way, Evans is going to have fantastic field position as back deep to receive is Watkins. He'll take it at his own 36-yard line. It is a foot race to the corner, and Watkins will be inside the 20, drop down at the 16, and a flag down late as we're going to have a not a smart play not a smart there. Play there. I believe it's going to be on Davis Watson, number 10. Just no point in that at the end of the play. The play is over. You got great. You're inside the 20 starting mm-hmm. field position. Mm-hmm. And now they're going to mark off. Oh, Locking boy. it back. On the return. Evan. Not a smart play. Play the spot. Over pretty much. First down. Yeah. Watkins did a great job, as you'll see. Watkins, he caught it right at the, what, 33-yard line. Yard line. And you see he got to the corner. He's got great speed. Just gets to the corner. And we might be able to see it here if the shot gets wide here at the end. So he's going down right here. Oh, I guess nope. I thought they called yeah. it here. No, they that called over the block there. in the back right at the tackle. So my apologies to Davis Watson. He had a good clean hit. It was just a block in the back. So instead of having it at the Grovetown 15, the Knights will have it at the Warrior 28-yard line. Still great field position here late in the quarter. And on the keeper is Demikas Taylor. Demikas Taylor breaks free. Taylor touchdown, Evans. I love that play design. He fakes it to Watkins and then follows him around the corner. So not only does he have his normal blockers, but he also has Watkins. You see, he's got a lineman pulling. He's got Watkins. They get the corner out of the way, and it's an easy touchdown for Demikas Taylor. I don't know if it's the easiest of his 19 rushing touchdowns, but it's certainly one of them. And 25 total on the year or this year. 29 yards on the touchdown run for Taylor. And Evans takes a 20 to 13 lead. He'll try to extend it to eight with the point after. Well, the Augusta give, kicks, Augusta, Georgia Military College kicks for college. And give Tyler, Max Tyler, the kicker who boomed that through, give him the credit because his punt pinned them back. The Evans defense did their job, and then the Evans offense answers with the touchdown. So just a good all-around effort there for the Knights. And speaking of Tyler, his extra point is up and through, and so a 2.51 left to play in the first half. It is now 21 to 13, this night's offense starting to come alive, A.B. Yeah, 21-13 again. They average well, over 44 a game, and, and right now they're right on that pace with 21 points with a couple, about three minutes left in this half, just under three minutes, and you just can't hold them forever. I mean, the, Grovetown's done an excellent job against them, but the bottom line is you can't hold them forever. Taylor 
has been the big play guy tonight, not only with his feet, with a 44-yard run, the 29-yard touchdown, but he also, remember, hit the big pass play mm -hmm. to set up the second touchdown as Tyler lines up to kick it. And there you see Max Tyler. He is kicked the last one, not into the end zone, through the end zone. One of the premier kickers in the CSRA, Max Tyler. Uh, you mentioned earlier he's hit from 49 <laughs> yards out this year, and yet again that one's going to go through the end zone. That almost went through the upright. <laughs> you know, on that last possession, I was going to say that block in the back, something that will drive Lemuel Lackey crazy, and I'm sure he'd tell the Knights about that at the half. Yeah. He may not remember that now. Well, yeah, it, it, that was a – Certainly a nice way for it. But, again, even with the penalty, they're starting at the 29, and thanks to that punt that set everything up. And then Tyler just pounding these kickoffs. The Warriors will set up shop at their own 20-yard line. Importance of an answer here for the Warriors, A.B.? Well, yeah, no doubt. If nothing else, you've got to get a possession where you keep the Evans offense off the field. You don't want to give them the ball again in this half. In a second, we'll check in with Matt Lane. And, by the way, great reference from – Spotter statistician Nathan Edwards, former lakeside kicker Andy Cardigan, who went to the University of Georgia, very reminiscent as Max Tyler. Looks a lot like him, and then, of course, boom, through the end zone like Cardigan used to. Down to the field, and Matt Lane with another Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. Matt. Thanks, John. Yeah, you and Ashley talking about uh, on offense, really both teams just big play after big play. No team really able to establish uh, kind of a long drive and really milk the clock. So Grovetown has a little over two minutes left uh, before halftime. What we've seen so far in the game is everybody score really quickly. So we'll see if there's more to come on that end and where Evans might even have another chance to score before halftime. Back to you, John. No gain for Bryson on first down, and now it's going to be a motion penalty. It was the left tackle. <laughs> ben Prescott's helping the officials out, <laughs> pointing right at him. But it was yeah, definitely the left tackle there, Dimchak, who moved. False start on the offense. Is a, on the wrong five yeah, this is We're it down. It started up with so much emotion. You hear coaches talk about weathering the storm, and Evans weathered that a little bit. Now Grovetown's got to come and answer because they have, you know, the last possession, of course, unfortunately had a drop on that big third down play, had to punt out of their own end zone. Second and 15 as the clock ticks under two minutes to play in the half. Not a whole lot there as Bingham is forced to keep it. Nice yeah. stick there by uh, Davis Watson. Yeah, he's playing a good game tonight, Watson. This team lost, talk about Grovetown's losses, Evans lost a lot off their defense last year. They did bring back Germany and Prescott and Lewis, three of their leaders, but they lost about five starters, maybe six last year. And uh, Watson has stepped in and done a good job tonight. And it looks like, did Evans call timeout? I didn't see which way they pointed, but somebody they, called timeout. Yeah, yeah, Evans called their final timeout here, trying to get the ball back. Uh, so Knights keeping their foot on the gas here, A.B., in the final two minutes of this first half. Yeah, well, Coach Lackey, you know, has, has an offense that can, he knows what they can do. And, yeah, you want to get them the ball back, especially in this type of game where it has been so close and so tight. You know, that one that one extra possession where you might get a score is, is huge. Don't forget as we go along here, pay attention to the names we call because we will be call naming our offensive and defensive players of the game, courtesy of McDonald's, at the conclusion of tonight's contest. Uh, the Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout is over, and it'll be third and call it 18 for Grovetown from their own 15-yard line. Durham is in the backfield with Bingham. This is Bingham in trouble, needs a block, got it, still on his feet, firing down the middle and completing. It is Taylor up to the 40-yard line. Now the ball comes out late, and I believe Evans has it. It was D'Angelo Durham, the University of Texas San Antonio commit, who fumbled the football. Let's see if they call him down. The Knights are saying their ball. Officials want to talk about it. Keep an eye on it. They don't have the luxury of the replay. Boy, Bingham keeping this play alive just as he did earlier and able to find a man right wide open. Quite the discussion going on at midfield, and they are going to say it is Grove Town football and a big first down. Woo. Oh, that is uh, tough well, because that ball looked out. And again, AB, we, we say it every play. week. They don't have the benefit of the replay at this level, and it's going to work out well for Grovetown. Big first down at their own 40-yard line. Yeah, I mentioned that D Durham, who caught that pass, 
is committed to the University of Texas San Antonio, offers from Benedict, Old Dominion, drawing some interest from other schools like Middle Tennessee State and Charlotte. Oh, and that ball almost picked off and instead complete into the arms of Victor Garces across midfield of the 47. And check that. I think that is that is Wharton who made the oh, catch. Wrong, wrong. Yeah, Bra Braxton Wharton. I had my roster. That messed up. boy, Grovetown has dodged. Wow. How many bullets has Grovetown dodged? Well, that's two in the last well, two plays. The safety earlier they get away from the fumble that probably should have been and that one could have been six easy instead it's a not only an not only is it not six it's a completion and a big play for grovetown so now that evans timeout might be helping grovetown uh, get get on the board here bingham has made two great plays the lakeside transfer doing a good job tonight for the warriors warriors on the move bingham looking to throw again instead going to keep it and dance his way to the 42 yard line and the clock running 42 41. And I believe, yeah, they will finally call timeout. And yeah, the Warriors will stop the clock with 40.9 seconds left. Touchdown. Well, I'll tell you, if Bingham was banged up, as we heard, he's not showing any effects of it. He's playing great. He picked up six yards. And the Napleton and Affinity of Augusta timeout to allow coaching staff to talk about it. Coach Bostell in his third year here at Grovetown. Well, we were talking about, you know, Evans calling timeout, maybe getting the ball back, and now Grovetown threatening with two big pass plays, both, though, uh, with two big plays. But the, both are two big pass plays then a run by Bingham, but everything is set up by their quarterback's mobility. Uh, he scrambled and threw the ball and hit it on the uh, pass play to D'Angelo Durham. His scrambling got him the nice run there. It's a luxury when you have a quarterback that can do that. Extend the play and occasionally make a play with those legs. Warriors still have one timeout left with 40.9 seconds left here in the second or the, uh, first half. It is second and five from the Evans 42 yard line. Bangham gonna keep. And he's going to be dropped at the 43-yard line. And now let's see if Groton will elect to take that final time out. 31, 30, 29. Clock continues to tick. They're not calling time. And now they will. And five or six seconds ticked off the clock there. Yeah, maybe more. If you're going to call time, if you're not going to call time and let it go, that's fine. But if you're going to call time, man, you've got to call it quicker. Uh, easy for us sitting in the booth, not down on the field. <laughs> And no gain on that play, so it's going to bring up a big third down play here. It'll be third and five, for long five, five and a half from the Evans 43-yard line, 43 well, and a half. It's such a tough job if you're an Evans secondary guy because what you have to do, you get Bingham back there running around, you think, okay, he's going to run, I come up. Well, every time they've done that, Bingham has hit him on a pass play, so he's done a good job tonight. I've been impressed with the play of both quarterbacks tonight. And the, you know, these – you know, you, they're not necessarily your prototypical guys, but they both can make plays. Taylor, the better runner of the two, although Bingham very shifty. And Bingham has thrown the ability, you know, shown the ability to throw the ball deep when he needs to. So coming out of the Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout, big third down for Grovetown. They need six. Bingham to throw deep. And it is picked off back there by Derek, Derek Canteen. Canteen once again. And that'll put an end to the Grovetown drive. And the Knights come up with a huge defensive play here at the end of the half. Yeah, Derek Canteen makes a nice play on the ball. That's what you have to do as a defensive back. You, go make, you, you become the receiver. You make the play on the ball. And really a little disappointing that the top receiver for Grovetown, Wharton, didn't do a better job of going for the ball. And I would be absolutely stunned here if the Knights didn't just take a knee or run it straight up the gut and take this thing to the locker room with an eight-point lead. You got to worry. He almost doesn't have room to take a knee. That's why they may, <laughs> they may try to just force it up maybe yeah. with the fullback through the middle. Let's see what we do here. And a quarterback keeper through the middle. Same difference, and that'll bring – the first half to an end. Still have a couple of set ticks left. And that will do it. 
for the first half of play. So, Evans with an impressive quarter of football. Grovetown had a chance to tie there late in the second half. And it is the Knights with an eight-point lead and Matt Lane down on the field with a with Coach Lemuel Lackey from the Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. Matt. Yeah, Coach Lackey, uh, 21 points in the first half. You certainly have to be uh, happy with the offensive production so far in the game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we felt like we could do some things. We've got some kids that are what we call make plays, and uh, we're happy with their production. Uh, Defensive-wise, really big play here to look like they've, you know, it's been a big play game. Look like Grovetown might be able to sneak in the end zone before half, but well, defense stood tall there. I'll, I'll say this. They're, they're a really talented team. They've got kids all over the place, running back, quarterback. He's exceptional. So we're just having to try to maintain. They're they putting pressure on us a lot. So we've got to go into halftime, regroup, and come out with a good game plan for second half. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, John. Thank you, Matt. Thanks to Coach Lackey for his time. Lemuel Lackey with all of that success for all of those years at Laney High School and now in his third year here at Evans and building the program here, 15-12 uh, and 12 so far in his career at Evans and the Knights with the lead here. It is uh, halftime at Grovetown. Your score, the Evans Knights 21, the Grovetown Warriors 13. We'll come back and take a look at scores from around the area and have our halftime show after this on Game Night Live. And Nick